So when I set this fence up, right, the little spring things in there with the turn screws, the set screws was loose and I just kind of turned it and kind of set it up and um, I haven't really touched it since then, but let me show you this. If I like zero this here and then I just see if it's repeatable, right? This thing is great, this little Magdro, get it on Amazon. So there's your repeatable zero. Slide it down to this end of the table. Try to get it to land on a clean piece of this garbage uh, side here. And, whoa, that's the biggest, that's the biggest error I've measured yet, but I was measuring like, see? It's crazy, you know, to try to do that and kind of do it by accident. You know, if, if, if we're looking at like two thousandths of run out down the whole table, that's pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Now, the next problem is, is like the, uh, the Formica or the Phenolic that uh, rides here. And this thing was hacked apart. I think they drilled holes to get the old bar off um, this off of whatever it was on previously. It was on another Unisaw that I got for free. Um, I got two Unisaws. That's a three phase. So that's in parts right now. Uh, table off. All the guts are out of the inside. So. I don't know if I'm going to save it for spare parts or try to build it up, put a face converter on it, sell it to somebody, who knows. Um, so this, I don't know if this will present a problem, these holes, uh, but I have yet to put my tape down because I, I got to see what I'm going to do with this thing because another problem is, is like, there is a hair of bow in the top of the table. But the big problem is with this, uh, with the way that this is, is that's a lot. And I know like the thing can be taken apart. Maybe that's what I got to do is uh, just rebuild this thing. Take the new, take the sides off completely. They are pretty beat up and uh, they're okay. It had another, uh, layer of something that I, I scraped off and I got the glue off, but, uh, so you see that the fence is tilting this way and over here you got the, that's pretty, pretty close, but, uh, I wish the other side was better. Yeah. So this side might just stay, this side might just stay on. I might just see if I can uh, rebuild the other side. But uh, I, my dad built me this table out of a, uh, I think it was a fine woodworking early issue. He has two other ones at his shop and it magically fit within like 30 second of an inch between the rails or you know I put this rail on it's a little small because I couldn't get two inch right away I was impatient I should have uh, just gotten the right thing but it fit perfectly between the two so you know one thing that I'm trying to do first thing is build a cross cut sled so then I got my I got a new insert and I set it up, I'll rock to it, but the tabs are a little bit different down there. Uh, I set it up and then I'm thinking about how I'm going to cut this. And I'm like, do I want to run the blade through my new insert? Uh, this blade is okay. It's actually new. But then if we start to compound the problems of this into... Uh, I got some maple over there on the floor to try to make runners. I don't have a planer. My band saws apart. I don't have a planer. <laughs> uh, 
I got a radial arm saw. It needs to be tuned up. So I'm thinking of all the steps I have to do to get a crosscut sled that will at least be useful. I do have to trim the runners at least and then start there and I've got a I got piles of stuff everywhere in here but I've got that sheet there to cut down to make a crosscut sled and I'm just running into little roadblocks of okay maybe I'll just try to set this insert was this insert came with the saw but was uh, very messed up it's bowed it's uh, made of wood plywood and it's got a little layer of uh, some kind of MDF on the bottom a little wedge but it, it's still way too short um, so when I saw this today I knew about it with the screws, the adjustment screws. This had no adjustment screws. I drilled some holes and set up uh, a couple screws there. Then I figured out that it's warped. I bet you it's pretty warped in the middle. Yes, it is. Um, so I'm kind of at a loss for whether trying to uh, make my runners with this zero clearance or just start with this one it's 30 bucks so I mean this blade is okay it's new I just didn't want to um, it's a 40 tooth it's a crappy Irwin but it was straighter less bent than the one I had so I didn't know if I wanted to uh, dig into this insert with that one but I I set it up and I shimmed it and it does not rattle around I'm just leery of making that cut because I'm cheap and 30 bucks is 30 bucks. So uh, I'm just taking my time trying to figure out the next step and where to put my money in the right places to get going. And I think I'm going to have to go after this thing. When I got it, actually you can still see, I think that's blood. I don't know. This came out of a production shop and uh, one guy did cut himself on this saw or that saw. I wasn't sure which setup this went with. Um, and the uh, the bar I repainted, I, I ground down, sanded, primed and painted and it had blood stains on it. So, uh, you know, interesting uh, history to it probably. But um, just trying to get things going. Got these the other day. And uh, they're neat. They, I think they'll definitely be useful because i am never used a table saw before, but I watched a lot on YouTube. That's, uh, you know, we still want to try to be safe. Don't get near the blade. And I think for now, that's my best option. Uh, I did make some push sticks the other night and I used them a little bit but I didn't feel quite uh, safe or as safe as I could be. I used another stick that I cut a notch in to kind of hold things down as I pass them past the blade. I'm, I'm kind of paranoid about things riding up. Um, I don't know how prevalent that is but uh, just trying to get a feel for doing things the right way and doing things safely and taking my time. I'm not jumping into any projects or anything. Um, about the only thing that I did do is I made this uh, floating bottom box just out of some, let's see, that's about a buck twenties worth of scrap uh, pine from the scrap bin at Home Depot. And I had some plywood that I cut down. So I just played with uh, bumping the fence and cutting the dado, you know, one kerf at a time. And then I've got a biscuit joiner, a biscuit machine that is, the motor's worn out on it and it is not happy. So a new one, a Ryobi, a crapo Ryobi is $99 and I'll probably spend more than that, trying to rebuild my lamello, but it's probably worth it because it's a lamello. Got it from my dad. 
So that's the state of things for now. And we'll just take it slow and try to do it right. Hey, thanks for tuning in this long and watching. Catch you next time.